Hey y'all, we're going to take a look today at multiple symbols of inclusion. If you remember, symbols of inclusion mean basically at this point parentheses we've dealt with. And uh, when you deal with more than one set of parentheses, you're doing multiple kind of, uh, uh, I guess, attack parts of, uh, of a, uh, uh, an expression, then you want to use more than one type of symbol of inclusion. In other words, you don't have a, you don't have a parenthesis right here and the same parenthesis right here and you know it, it gets to be too confusing. So what they'll do is take turns and use sometimes parentheses then brackets and fancy brackets and so on just so you don't get confused. And basically when you see these and go ahead and copy this down and pause and copy it when I'm going to finish in one second. But when you see these go ahead and just work your way from the middle outward and again, write as many different steps as you need to to keep things nice and clear for yourself so you don't make silly mistakes. Don't try to do too much at once. So let's go ahead and attack this if you've copied it down. If not, go ahead and pause it. Um, we're going to take this part here first and deal with that. So I'm going to go ahead and just write down uh, this part again in a parenthesis here. And this will be negative 7. All right. Then minus 4 in bracket, then minus 3. And again, we're going to work our way out from the inside the parentheses of course that's you know, this is considered parentheses right here and those are that's remember that's your order of operations the very first thing so let's do that so negative 7 minus 4 will be negative 11 so I'm going to keep the negative 2 there and I have my negative 11 and then minus 3 now if you notice this becomes basically a multiplication problem because you're multiplying negative 2 times negative 11 when a negative times a negative is a positive so we have 22 minus 3 which gives us 19 and there we go okay we're going to do the same kind of attack here so go ahead and pause and copy for this one all right well i'm just going to go ahead and rewrite these here and i'll just rewrite my three my fancy bracket here my five and my regular bracket now inside here i'm going to go ahead and do this i want to do this one and then we'll come to and we'll add that one as well so negative two minus four is negative six that is being multiplied by negative 5 plus 3, which is negative 2. And I'll go ahead and put the minus 5 there in the bracket, fancy bracket, and then minus 7. And again, we're still in, um, you know, we're, we're still inside these parentheses. We're going to work our way outward. So let's go ahead and keep doing, working our way outward. And first off, we'll take this part right here. So I'll take negative 2, uh, excuse me, times negative 6, that'll be 12. 12 minus 5 will be 7. So we can write the entire thing again with a fancy bracket here and a 5 bracket and 12 minus 5 is 7. And we can end up there and minus 7 again. And again, we're still inside the brackets here. So we're still going to go ahead and go. 5 times 7 is 35. So we have now 3 times 35 and then minus seven, and again, we're still doing the order of operations. Uh, treat this as a parenthesis. We're gonna multiply here. Three times 35 is 105. Minus seven is 98. So a lot of hooey, but again, when you see these long, complicated looking ones, just break them down one step at a time. Take care of this, negative six, negative two, that's gonna do 12, and then 12 minus five is seven, you multiply all these throughout and just keep doing your order of operations and we'll do more of these okay here's another one pause and copy all right this is no different from any other one except for you're just going to do two of them and then you're going to when you're finished with them you're going to have a numerator and a denominator and you're just going to just divide and if you can like a, any other fraction on earth reduce it if you possibly can so we can do exactly the same thing and we can go ahead and start inside these fancy kind of brackets here and do that first. So we have negative five, then we have fancy bracket here, and then there's your regular bracket, all right? In this part right here, we have uh, negative four plus two is negative two, and then we can end that, and then that's gonna be times negative three, all right? And we'll just, uh, oh, I guess we can do like this here. All right, negative two, times negative three is positive six and then we can just you know we can probably just go ahead and do positive six times negative five which gives us negative 30 for our numerator all right two minus seven let's work on the denominator here we have negative one times two minus seven and two minus seven is negative five 
And then negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. And then negative 30 divided by positive 5 is a negative 6. Negative divided by positive is a negative. So there we go. All right. Well, let's look at uh, operations, uh, the order again. Let's go back first of all. We have 6 times 7 plus 2. And again, what goes first? Multiplication. So we're going to go 6 times 7 is 42 plus 2 is 44. And that is, you know, even if we have something like this, we might have 5 plus 8 times 3. Now, which means we're not going to do 8, excuse me, 5 plus 8 first. We're going to take care of that first because it's multiplication. Multiplying and dividing take precedence over adding and subtracting. We do those first. Okay. So when you see something like this, uh, it's, you know, not really that big of a deal. You're just going to, again, do the numerator. Do the denominator, reduce the fraction if you can, and then you've got your answer. So in this one, your first uh, order of operations will be, of course, the 3 times 7 because it's multiplication. So 3 times 7, and again, we're ignoring the denominator right now. We'll do that later. So 3 times 7 is 21. 21 minus 5 is 16. All right. Then we have negative 7 minus 9, which is it's negative 7 minus 9, negative 16. Okay, and 16 divided by 16 is 1, and a positive divided by a negative is a negative. And there we go. Okay, let's try another one. This is really nothing strange or unusual. I mean, it's just, you know, you have four operations. That's all you're ever going to have on these. Uh, and let's look at it. So we have here, this can be considered a division problem, because it is a division problem. It, it fractions are division problems. So if you want to, you can go ahead and just kind of reduce this and say this is going to be 8 plus 6 minus 5 times 3. And you tell me, what's the next order of operations? What do we do first? This part, right? The 15. Okay. So we're going to have 8 plus 6 and then minus. You can just copy the minus, keep it right down there, and then take care of that part, which is 15. There we go. All right. 8 plus 6 is 14. 14 minus 15, and again, you have two numbers. There's a 14 and there's a negative 15. You're plopping those things together. So you're going to, since they're different signs, you're going to subtract the absolute values and get a 1 and realize that this is farther away from 0 than this. It has a negative, so your final answer will also have a negative as well. Okay? And another. Let's go ahead and, if you want to go ahead and pause and copy, go ahead and do that. And, uh, you know, I, we, you can just go and take care of the multiplying and dividing first. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll take care of this first and that first. All in one swoop here. So I'm just going to copy down my 5 and my plus again. And I'll just go ahead and we'll just go to multiply and divide right to left or left to right. So 2 times 9 is 18. 18 divided by 3 that is 6, right? Okay. And by the way, you can multiply and divide in any order. You have 9 divided by 3 is also 3. 2 times 3 is also 6. That'll be minus, and then 12 div uh, times 4 is 48. All right, now we have 5 plus 6. That is 11. 11 minus 48. And again, you have this number added to this number. All right, so you have 11, and you have a negative 48. Well, anytime you have two of those opposite signs, you absolute value and subtract. So 48 minus 11 is 37. Which one should I choose, positive or negative? Well, this is clearly farther away from zero, so this will also be negative to match that. Okay, all right. Very quickly, let's look at products of signed numbers. And we've already kind of looked at this, uh, two being, you know, you'll not be surprised to learn two, all right? Negative two is the opposite of two, which is negative two, right? Not much to that either. Okay, now you tell me, what is the opposite of the opposite of 2? Two? 2, right? Okay, and how about the opposite of the opposite of the opposite of 2? Notice we're getting some different bracket shapes there. That's going to be negative 2, right? Because this is negative 2, the opposite of that is positive 2, the opposite of positive 2 is negative 2. Okay, you can keep going, all right? There's, look, there's four of them. Opposite of 2, then 2, then negative 2, then positive 2, well, boom. Now you can see kind of a pattern developing here. Do you see that? Okay. And we all, all you need to do 
is just count. Let's look at this again. Uh, if there is one negative sign, it's negative. If there are three negative signs, it's negative. If there are, you know, zero negative signs, it's positive. Two negative signs, positive. Four negative signs, positive, and so on. So basically, if there are an odd number of negative symbols outside of a number, the number itself will be negative. If there are an even number, the number will be positive. If you ever forget it, just keep counting. It's not that big of a deal. But if it, after a while, you'll, you, you'll, you can drop it and just go ahead and remember what it is. So anyhow, okay, let's look at negative two as a product. Well, negative two, of course, times negative two is going to be a positive four, all right? Negative two times negative two times negative two. Well, this will be two, negative two, that's gonna be four. Four times negative two is negative eight. And this part, let's take a look at this. You can, again, we can group these first. That part's positive four. This part's also positive four. Four times four, 16. And we can keep going. This part we know so far is 16. 16 times negative two is negative 32. So you see another pattern developing, right? Anytime, look at these, you tell me. Anytime you see a negative, excuse me, a, an even number of negative factors, what sign is the product? What sign is the answer? It's positive, right? And it also goes for <coughs> a, an odd number of negative factors. There's one negative, there's three negatives, there's five negatives each time, negative, negative, and negative, and so on. So in other words, if you have a, a positive, excuse me, an even number of negative uh, factors, the evens, the, the negative factors kind of cancel each out. They kind of like work, a negative works with another negative, turns it into positive if you're multiplying. So if you have an even number, you have an even number that kind of works with each other. If you have an odd number, you have kind of one extra negative uh, you know, factor out there, then the entire product becomes negative as well. So they'll ask you uh, questions like this. Give the signs of the below products. No, I don't care what the answer is. The question to you is, look at this. Is this going to be a positive answer or a negative answer? It's positive, right? These are gonna be positive. Six times three, that's a piece of cake. Then we have a negative times a negative, that's also a positive. Who cares what the answer is? Um, that's the answer, okay? Well, it's 648 if you wanna know. Anyway, okay, good, all right, let's try this one. Is this going to be a positive answer or a negative answer? It's a negative, right? Okay, because these two work with each other to give you a positive. The positive then times a negative is a negative. There's only one of them. Odd number of negative factors give you a negative product, an even number gives you a positive product. Okay, how about this one? Who cares what the answer is? Is it gonna be negative or positive? Negative, right? Okay, that's one, two, three. That's an odd number, which means you have an even number which you know cancel each other out and turn into a positive, but there's a negative left over, that'll be a negative product, okay? Let's go ahead and figure out this one out. Go ahead and do all the arithmetic and find the answer. No, don't do that, don't waste your time. Okay. Well, the question to you is, will this be positive or will it be negative? Well, there's a pair of negatives. There's a pair of negatives. There's a pair of negatives. That's an even number of negatives. They cancel each other out. You could say they're positive and the whole thing will be positive. And there you go. Okay. All right. Let's look at the practice problem A. Pause it and give it a whirl and come back when you're finished. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, attack this thing from the inside out. Let's take care of this inside here first. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and, I, I suggest that you do this as well. Um, go ahead and just copy these down and get this down. Negative four minus three is negative seven. Negative eight minus two is negative 10. And then we have a minus four and I'll end the bracket in the fancy bracket there. Okay, and again, let's go ahead and attack this from the inside. Negative seven times negative 10 is 70. 70 minus four is 66. So we have three times two times 66, all right? Two times 66, if you do the arithmetic, is gonna be 132. And then that'll be inside the fancy bracket there. And then just three times 132 is 396. There we go, okay? Pause it and try B now. Okay, let's take a look at B here. And uh, again, this is not that big of a deal, really. You're just gonna take care of the numerator, get an answer, then take care of the denominator, get an answer, 
then divide and reduce and you're done. So let's look at the uh, numerator first. I'm copying negative three again in fancy bracket here time. All right, I'm gonna do this in, in first. So negative four minus one is negative five. And I'll multiply that by three and I'll subtract the five and then the yoink, there we go. Okay, so this is what I'm focusing on right now. Uh, negative five times three, which is negative 15. Now, so I've got negative three times negative 15 and then minus five, okay? Well, a negative times a negative is a positive. Three times 15 is 45. 45 minus five is 40. That's my numerator, all right? Good enough. Bottom, four minus seven is negative three negative three, so we have a two times negative three, which gives me negative six. And of course, we can uh, reduce this, of course. Each one of those is divisible by two, and we can just put the whole thing as negative because a positive divided by a negative is a negative, so the whole thing is negative, so 20 over three, and there we go. Okay, all right, pause it and try C. Okay, C is pretty simple, 36. That's going to be a positive 36 because there are four uh, negative, X, negative uh, factors. So, okay, pause it and try D. Okay, D will be two, piece of cake. There we go. All right, pause it and try E. It's a negative. Yeah, we have an odd number of negative factors, and that's all we even care about it, uh, unless you want to for some unknown reason, multiply the entire thing. Okay, all right. Have a great day, guys. Hope that made sense, and see you all next time.